Global response to the COVID-19 pandemic has become one of the groundbreaking moments in science. Effective vaccines were successfully developed in a short space of time. One might therefore ask, why can't we do the same for HIV and AIDS? The virus has been in existence for about 40 years now. So what's stopping the vaccine breakthrough? So for more on this, I'm here. we're going to discuss this matter with Professor Linda Gale Becker from the Desmond Tutu HIV Foundation. Prof, always a pleasure speaking to you. Welcome to South Africa tonight. This has been a growing question, isn't it? That how is it that we were able to come up with the COVID-19 vaccine in about two years or so, whereas... When the case of HIV and AIDS, it's been 40 years and we can't come up with an adequate vaccine. Is it a case of us not having the necessary skills required or is it a case of maybe ulterior motives as in it becomes more cost effective to have HIV as opposed to not have HIV? It raises certain questions, doesn't it? It does, but I don't think... Um conspiracy theories really faith i think what we're dealing with here is just a different virus mm. i think it is important to note that the the success of the covid vaccine has largely been on the back of um work that has been done in hiv so that definitely gave covid the leg up uh, but we are dealing with a vaccine that is significantly different uh, in hiv and just poses a greater challenge in addition, I think, you know, some of this has been about resources. So the COVID vaccine, uh, that, uh, you know, R&D has been incredibly well resourced from all over the world, whereas HIV uh, comes sort of second, and it must be said TB vaccines it come third, along with malaria vaccines. So I think it is just about prioritization rather than a sort of conspiracy uh, Machiavellian reason. Yeah, but then where are the challenges if we are to really interrogate the, the heart of the matter? What is it about the HIV virus that is stopping us from putting in our resources and for coming up with an adequate vaccine um, that we're not seeing when it came to the COVID-19 vaccine? Well, I think the first thing people will know that most of us, even if we get COVID infection, recover. Um, and so there's already uh, sort of proof that if the immune system is adequately primed, it can overcome the, the COVID virus, SARS-CoV-2, and people can recover. As you well know, once you have HIV, you have it for life. We have a couple of people around the world who have been cured through incredibly difficult uh, means. So unlike SARS-CoV-2, HIV virus uh, becomes in, ingrained in the body and it cannot be overcome with the immune system. So we haven't found that very important aspect of a vaccine that could prime an immune system that would overcome the, the virus to the extent that we could abrogate infection. And it is because the virus is, is unusually difficult. We don't know, unlike again, SARS-CoV-2, we've got the spike. It, it was kind of crying out uh, that a vaccine could be built around that spike uh, protein. We don't have the equivalent in HIV. And that's made it really difficult. In addition, we've got a very mutable va a virus. So HIV virus changes literally, uh, you know, almost in front of your eyes. And so that also makes it very difficult to kind of find the best way to uh, to enclose it, if you like, in a vaccine. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, the fight goes on. Um, and this country has played a significant role and we will continue to do so. I'm very excited that for the first time, the mRNA platform is now also being extended to HIV. We've seen such success with COVID, um, and I'm hoping that that may be a wonderful breakthrough. In addition, there are some terrific new um, uh, potential candidates in the pipeline. So I think, you know, we shouldn't give up hope. Uh, some vaccines have taken 50, 60. As you know, we're still looking for a very effective TB vaccine, which has been around with us for, for many, many decades. So mm -hmm. there's work to be done outside of COVID. Well, Prof, as um, a track record would prove so, and as history would dictate, that when countries make a decision to come together and to come up with a vaccine, they can do so within a short space of time. We've seen it done in China. We saw the United States rally. We saw some of the European countries rally in order to find an amicable solution for this COVID-19 virus. If countries and scientists were to do the same with HIV, 
would we find ourselves with a vaccine sooner rather than later? And therefore, the question, I guess, then will be what must be done to mobilize these countries so that they can prioritize HIV? Totally. So I think, you know, I'm one of those strongest advocates that we have to uh, re energize ourselves around the fight for HIV. And we have to see that a vaccine is at the cornerstone of that. And that means we do have to do exactly what you've said now, Faith. We need the whole world to come behind this, uh, a lot of resources to come into it, public and private, um, NGOs, you know, governments have to come behind this and really make the effort. And I think it is that we have to say to people, much like they were worried that so many people be were becoming infected with SARS-CoV-2, every day, young women and young, uh, you know, young people around the world become infected with HIV, and they face a lifetime of infection, unlike with SARS-CoV-2, where we know that many, many people recover. With HIV, it is a lifelong sentence. And this is this should galvanize us um, and we have to keep up with that advocacy and 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 I'm hoping that you know the, the that COVID will be a catalyst uh, for us to see that this is feasible and possible and and you know we can do it. Well, Prof, I'm sure we can speak the entire night about this issue. It certainly is a one that is frustrating, if not the least. Professor Linda Gelbecker, I will leave it there for now from the Desmond Dutu HIV Foundation.